God, great things what you have done. Great things. Come on, let this be your confession that you have done great things. You have done great. You have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great things. I will bless your soul today. Thank you. 
want to take this opportunity just begin to think about the goodness of God from the beginning of the year till now we've escaped by the grace of God and we are here because of him just lift your hands and begin to bless the name of the Lord
this is my testimony. I'm currently a missionary to Madagascar and I've been there for the past seven years. I moved to Antananarivo um, in 2016. Prophet sent me to Antananarivo to assist the mission there. And later in 2019, he asked me to move to Majanga where I began the First Love Church there. And I'm there currently with my wife Francine and, and our two children. And it's been a very great experience. And I'm grateful to be part of this family where since we are, we are young, we have been taught how it's possible to be young and yet do the work of God and how we are not pushed, pushed aside as children who don't know what they are doing, but we are given an, an opportunity to, to, to do the work of God. And, and for this, I'm very grateful to God. I can remember when we first moved, when we first um, were on the way to Madagascar, one thing that went through my mind was the fear of the future, the fear of the unknown, how would things turn out with the church work, how will we survive and all that. But I think that God has really come through for us. And one challenge was that in Madagascar, they, 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 they speak Malagasy. So we were wondering how we would get a job to survive and all that. But we remembered Prophet's teaching on um, serving the Lord and seeking first the kingdom of God and everything else being added unto us. And so we just believe that God will, God will make a way. And I'm very privileged to have parents that are also in the ministry, who are both pastors, and they also encouraged us. And it's, it's, it's been a media journey. And so we, I remember applying to many jobs, and what we would apply to were uh, like English schools and English um, organizations, and nobody even responded. But we knew that God would come through for us, and we were also believing on uh, the prophecies that our prophet has also given to us. I remember one day, someone came to me and told me that somebody wants me to come for an interview. And this was a school that I hadn't even applied for. And the owner had apparently said that even before we come for the interview, the job is already ours, but it is a formality. And that was a major source of encouragement to us because we saw that God was working wonders to, to, to help us. And since then, it's gone like that throughout. Since we went to Majanga, in a similar way, we also got jobs miraculously. We began the church there. We were four adults in our living room. But today, God has, has given us a church, and we are, we, are, we are really grateful to Prophet for building us a church building as well. And now we have a cathedral, which is one of the biggest in the whole city. Lives are being transformed, people are being delivered, and people are having the gospel preached to them. And all this, if we were using our own resources, I wonder how many years it would have taken to get to this level. So we are really grateful to Prophet into this house for how far we've come. And I want to really encourage everyone out there. In Luke 22, Jesus said that when I sent you without script, without wallet, without purse, without shoes, lacked you anything? And the, his, his disciples said, no, we lacked nothing. And I think this has been our, our story, how God has taken care of us all these years. And I would want to really encourage you to really serve the Lord with all, your, with all you have as Christ gave his life for us. The only thing that is befitting is that we would give our life for him. And I want to really encourage everyone to take God seriously and to, and to give God their life in this area also.
Hallelujah. Come on, first love church. Let's be on our feet. In your heart, can I say thanks Sunday? We want to give thanks unto our God by giving him some more praise. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor by the shoulder. Tell them one reason why you have thanks and praise for God this year. Oh, your neighbor didn't mind you. Find another neighbor and tell them what the Lord has done for you this year. Hallelujah. We're going to sing praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Bible says, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, sing our praise him. Our praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain.
your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Wow. Are you excited to be in church? Did you enjoy praising God? Ask your neighbor, how can I say thanks? And ask your neighbor, if your dance was a thanksgiving dance, will it be a good dance? So we'll dance again. Amen. And we'll be saying thank you to God again. Amen. So if you came to church with an offering, I want you to lift up that offering. Amen. You know, the scriptures are so littered with our expression of thanksgiving in a way of bringing offerings to God. And the Bible says that God commands us to bring offerings to him. Amen. Let's look at Amos chapter 4 verse 5. In the contemporary CEV. And let's see what God's word says. Amos chapter 4 verse 5. Amos chapter 4 verse 5. Do you have CEV? 
It says, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with living. But I want the CEV, if you would find it for me. Who is up there? CEV. The King James says that, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Amen. So this morning's offering throughout the day, all that will be given in church will be full of thanksgiving. Amen. Every offering we give is a thanksgiving offering today. Amen. And if you came with an offering, lift it up, let us pray. Amen. Good. Look at this. It says, bring offerings to show me how thankful you are. Yes, that's God. It says, bring offerings to show me how thankful you are. Gladly bring more offerings than I have demanded. You really love to do this. I, the Lord God, have spoken. Amen. So do we have first lovers who really love to give God offerings? Oh, can I hear your shout of praise? So take out your thanksgiving offering to show how much you are thankful. Amen. And let us pray. Father, thank you for this privilege. Thank you for the opportunity to give. We pray that our offering will be pleasing to you and acceptable to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Quickly come. And then let's, wow. We have wonderful instrumentalists, so we are hearing some jazz. Why not? Where's the saxophonist? Oh, and as you walk forward and bring your thanksgiving offering, say something nice to your neighbor. Say that God has been good. Say that God has been kind. And we are thankful.
First Love Church, it's that time again to bless the name of the Lord. Let's lift our hands and clap. Come on. It's Thanksgiving Sunday, the last Sunday, where we give thanks unto the Lord for all he's done, everything he's given. He crowns the year with his goodness. So let's sing and bless the Lord. One, two, three, let's sing. Bless the Lord.
come on, shout amen. Today is How Can I Say Thanks Sunday. Amen. And we are in church to say thank you to God. Amen. So stand to your feet. It's time for the word of God. How many of you feel thankful to God? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. You feel grateful to the Lord? I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me Come on, has he made you smile this year? He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. He has made me Now I get also brought us through this year we say thank you whatever he has given us we say thank you whatever he has taken from us we say thank you whatever he has said we lift our hands and we say thank you are you excited to be in the house of God and give the Lord a thanksgiving shout of praise and appreciation yeah Becca yeah Becca yeah yeah Jesus Oh, give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh, come on, thank you for all he's done. Give a shout of appreciation to Jesus. Come on, tell him how good he has been. Tell him what a wonderful God he is. What a good God we serve. My soul praise his name and forget not his benefits. Hallelujah. You people thought I cannot sing a tree song. You don't know, it's just one of my ass now. I'll be releasing them. Amen. Well, it's time for the word of God. I wanted us to sing to remember what God has done for us. Amen. And now it's time to hear one of the last sermons of 2023 we have a few more Sundays and then we are crossing over and I thank God 
that I'm in church today. And I have something to say thank you for. So today we are welcoming up our prophet to come to the stage. Now listen, we are going to sing one last song as he comes up on stage. And we are going to sing, I expect a miracle. Why? Because some of us are expecting a miracle before 2024 comes along. And the Bible says, though it tarry, yet it shall speak. And so we are believing God that there is a miracle around the corner right before we hit 31st December. How many of you still believe in God and still expect something from God? Now, tell your neighbor your prayer so that when it happens, you say, remember I told you. Tell your neighbor what I'm, I'm believing God for this before we end the year. As I come for Thanksgiving service, I'm believing God is going to change my story in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing. I expect a miracle today. A miracle. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. For those who believe it, they say. Come on, do you believe his word is still the same? I believe his word is still the same. Father, which art in heaven, we are grateful for today, for all you have done for us this year, and we have come to say thank you, thank you, and thank you again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. And we are giving thanks to the Lord. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. In everything. And so, that means that, you know, usually the things that the word of God says, do this. Usually the things that are written, do this, is what we don't do. For some good reason. So that is why it even says so. Because you, you find yourself not doing that. That's why the Bible says, husbands, love your wives. Because if you don't take care. You will not love your wife. It can easily be your situation that you won't love your wife. That's why it is. Husbands, love your wife. And that's why it says, wives, submit to your, <laughs> your husband. Because if you don't take care, in the same way, you say that you will not submit naturally so it says in everything give thanks so for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you amen so that is why we've set aside 
today to say thank you. Amen. Now, thank you is important because uh, every good thing comes out of being thankful. You see, being thankful is, is a spirit. Um, and so, as soon as you depart from thankfulness, you move into a negative realm almost immediately. Almost every bad thing that exists in the world comes out of a, an, un, an unthankful spirit. Are you with me? So, it is important that you are thankful to God because the more thankful you are, the more you are operating not in an evil spirit. Are you there? So, it's important for us as a church to be thankful so that we don't slip into negativity. Negativity. Because as soon as you do that, you are out. Amen. All right. Now, when Jesus was going to perform a great miracle in John chapter 6, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 6. I'm, I'm going to give you prayer topics for 2024. All right? Now, Jesus went up into a mountain And there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. And he said to Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Amen. Are you with me? So, this was a problem. And in our lives, there are problems. Problems of provision. How will we get what we need. How? How many of you were not able to watch Flow Church Service this morning? Raise your hand because most of you were not. I beg you, please. Just let it, I mean, to comply with my question. Okay. No, no, raise your hand. I need to see. Okay. How many were able to? Okay. Okay. Now, there are problems, and Jesus knows how, but he asks you how. How do you plan to do it? And the reason that he's asking you is because he's testing you. Amen. Look at it, verse 6. He said this to prove him. 
For he himself knew what he would do. So always remember, when Jesus is asking you a question, it's not for him to learn from you. Oh, really? This is what I should do? Please. Let's be serious. Jesus is not learning from you. Huh? He is asking you to make you think. Because you see, maybe the guys who were sitting with Jesus, all right, they hadn't even thought that there was a problem because Jesus was around. So, child, there's no problem. We are just flowing. But he, he wanted him to think, have you thought of all these people? And how are we going to do that, come out? Now, for every problem, there is a solution. And God knows the solution. So, as you look, how can there be a provision? How are we going to make it? That's the question you are asking. Some of you will be asking, so where will I find a beloved? Where will I find a man at my age? How will a man find me at my age? When you look at yourself in the mirror, so, mm, even me, I don't find myself nice. Unless I should go and deceive somebody and say that I'm, I'm nice. Are you with me? Who will like me? So if the question has come to your mind, I have good news for you. John chapter 6 verse 6. Jesus said this to prove, to test you, to see. Because he himself already knew what he would do. So God knows exactly what he's going to do. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now Philip answered. He was, I think he was trying to be clever. Like I did econs. I did statistics. I did arithmetic in the university. He said 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That everyone may take a little. All right. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here, you know, they were all trying to say, you know, clever. There is a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. All right? But what are they among so many? So... Jesus said, make the men sit down. In other words, calm down. Calm down. You know sometimes you are sitting and you are agitated, you stand up and start to sit down. He says, sit down, calm down. Amen. Amen. Sit down. And so the men sat down. So the first step for your great miracle. Now, this, this miracle, in the eyes of the human beings who were there, was the greatest miracle that Jesus did on earth. Because this is the miracle that they wanted to make him a king by force. After this one. Not anything else. This one. Not even Lazarus. Lazarus, they didn't want to make him a king. This one, they were afraid. I think it's an astonishment. Counting an astonishing miracle. Yes. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. 
When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain. Actually, John chapter 6 is one of the most fantastic, miraculous um, chapters in the whole Bible. Yeah. Because after the miracle of provision, he did the miracle of walking on the water, the miracle of rebuking the storm, the miracle of immediate transport. He was immediately on the other side. I mean, transport, a lot of miracles. About seven of them, if you are interested, if you have time. Yes. Anyway, back to verse 6. So, calm down. Then number two, Jesus took the loaves and then when he had given thanks, he was performing a miracle. So, first was to calm down and second was to give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. This is how to perform a miracle. Do you want to know how to perform a miracle? Okay, the formula is, how did Jesus perform the miracle? First, he said to the people, sit down, calm down. Calm down. When you're agitated, you won't behave well. Number two, he took what he had. some documentary that we had in the church. So she asked me that, where do you get these people from? Where do you get all these people? Either the people in the documentary or the people who are making the documentary. She was asking, where do, how do you get all this? Do you know where I get all these people? They are the fishes and the bread in front of me. Everybody has something in front of them. Even your beloved you are looking for is around. It's in the system. Maybe you passed by him seven times in the last few weeks. Hmm. So, number one, are you there? Take, okay, let me just give you the point so that you write it in that way. Take the physical things that you have. Or or if you like, number one, calm down. Number two, take the physical things that you have. Number three, give thanks. And then number four, use the people that are there with you. All right? And then number five, don't complain and don't murmur. Don't complain at all. Miracles will stop when you start complaining. So number one is what? Calm down. Number two, take what you have, which is the five loaves and the two fishes. Number three, step number three is give thanks. It's important to say thank. Thank you for what? Thank you for providing dinner for us. And you you could have said, are you God? You can't count, you see. When you look at the people that are here, look at the bread that you've given and so on. Do you count? Do you understand the problems we have on earth? Now look at the number of people that are here and then the amount of bread that you have. So how will we share it? Even when even me and the disciple Christ thought enough for us. Is it, is, it, is it the way you are talking? It sounds rude. It sounds scary. You see that even judgment can fall on you from heaven. The line of questioning as you question God and you complain about him, if you don't take care, you bring something on yourself. So, take what you have, hmm? Distri- all right? Then when he had finished giving thanks, 
He called his disciples. So he used the men, and the people that were around. Look at the scripture. And he distributed to the disciples. So he started to use the guys that were around him. So the guys around you and the people around you are part of your miracle provision from Jesus. Somebody around you. I've never had somebody who is not around me. Always somebody around in my life, in my ministry is part of my miracles. Somebody. Right? This person is the miracle. Yeah, that's why I told you that your beloved is in the system. He is in the system. Fantastic. You not miss each other again. Amen. So giving thanks is important for miracle power. Amen. Amen. Around you. Now, when he had given thanks, all right, he distributed. Now, when they were filled, he said to his disciples, he has not finished doing the miracle. Gather up the fragments that none may be lost. Now, that is equally a part of the miracle. He didn't, look, if somebody can make bread to feed 5,000 people, why would he want to gather fragments? Because if you are gathering fragments, it's like you don't have. So why would you need to gather little bits and pieces when you could have so much bread to feed 5,000 people? Can you imagine? Is there, there's no bakery in Accra which bakes for 500 people, uh, 5,000 people a, a day. There's no bakery. The bakery squad, they stop even producing the bread. Huh? So Jesus hasn't finished though. I hope you are learning from Jesus. Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. If you want to get into the greatness of God, you need to look at Jesus Christ. So, they gathered as if they don't have money, as if they don't have provision. And then when they gathered them together, they filled 12 baskets. Hey! 12 baskets. That nothing be lost. And he gave, I'm sure, every desire. Judas, take one. John, Matthew, everybody, one basket. They're all holding the basket to the house. Now, verse 14. Then... Extra baskets. That was
were crying. Some people were emotional. They said, the stop, the stop. I put when they say, angels are here. What is happening? I, mean, I, I, feel the, I feel the presence too awesome. Hey. Provision. You know, sometimes when God provides for you, you can sense his power. That this one, there's only God who has provided this thing for me. Oh. Only God has provided this for me. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have this. Only God has provided this for me. It's, it's one of the things that sometimes you, you can see the power of God. That's why Jesus asked. You know, financial miracles are like gentle miracles. Because when Jesus sent the disciples, he sent them without a purse. And he said, when I sent you without money and without a purse, did you lack anything? You just ask them that question. Did you lack anything? Look at it. When I sent you without a purse, without a script and shoes, lacked you anything, they said nothing. So it's like it was happening. Always there was somebody who would pay and somebody who would provide and some way to get the things somehow. So as we come at this time, we must see the greatness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want you to be thankful for all the parts of the miracle that God has done for you, including gathering 12 baskets because there was 5,000 people in 12 baskets. And now I know you are asking, why would you need baskets? Now, this is also part of the mysteries of God. You see, if you look at the temptations of Jesus, each of them was a temptation to do something a little unusual. All right? And you see, because God does unusual things, we want him or expect him to do it only. That's true. Wow. Okay. Wow. So since you can turn stones into bread, just let's turn stones tomorrow on Wednesday, on Thursday. Let's always be turning stones into bread. Why should we gather bread like normal people? No. If you do that, you see that many of the people who are praying for babies will not have them because what you will say is that if Mary could get pregnant without having sex with a man, the Lord, just feel free. Feel free. Just do it again. And keep doing it. Every week. Do it every week. Do it again. Yes. Or you don't get what I'm saying. I mean, did he make that Mary pregnant or not? Yes. So why didn't he do that for Zacharias and Elizabeth? Just a few months apart. John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. Jesus had brothers and cousins. If you, you made Mary pregnant absolutely without touching her, Lord, just do it. What are you waiting for, Lord? But rather he found an old man, Zacharias, who was almost dead. And an old lady. Hey, he bypassed all the young people. He had not frozen his eggs. Her eggs frozen the sperms. There was no IVF and all these modern things that we have. Old, old man sperms. Today the sperm count in the world is dropping. There is a, there is a worldwide drop of sperm count. Sperms are finishing. Yes. I, why, why are they laughing? Do you know why they are laughing? Uh, oh, 
Oh, yeah, it was on, I think, BBC or CNN or whatever. Worldwide. Spams are finishing. <laughs> oh, yes. What's your name again? Winnie. Long time. Are you around? Beautiful. Now, I think I understand what you are saying. Lord, if you can do that, just do it. Yes. And I think that there is a constant provocation of God. Do, do fantastic things. Like when Jesus was on, when Jesus was on the mountain, it's, he told the Lord, fly using a spiritual cable car and fly from the top of the mountain. Because if you've been to Jerusalem, to the uh, Mount of Temptation, some hard rock place. I mean, it's even the cable car going there. We always be praying as we are moving in it. And he said, jump. The Lord will give his angels. And, and of course, it's true. It's true. But you see, God, what, I want you to, why doesn't God do this in this unusual, fantastic way? All the time. When he asked him, because yeah, I even wonder, wonder to myself, is it a temptation? If he asks Jesus to fly, is there anything wrong? Because he can fly. <laughs> Jesus walked on, on the water. When he left this bread place, look at it. The verse, it says he walked 25 to 30 furlongs. Bring that verse. 30 furlongs. Do you know what is 30 furlongs? Look at it. So when they had rode about 5 and 20 furlongs and 30 fellows, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. They went 30 fellows. Do you know how I know fellows? In horse racing, eight fellows is one mile. Eight fellows is one mile. So when, when the horses are running, they say, oh, they are running a mile or they are running eight fellows. The shortest race is six fellows. Yeah, so eight fellows is one mile. So when I saw these fellows, I calculated, look at it. Four, uh-huh. Another version. Four miles. Change it back to the fellows. I was explaining fellows. You are, you are changing them. See me after that. Don't be a hero. Eh? <laughs> you are too fast. <laughs> when they had rode five and twenty fellows or thirty fellows, eight into twenty-five is how much? Three. Three, eight, twenty-four. So Four eight is what? 32 felons. So Jesus was between three and four miles. 25 will be eight, four, three, three A mile is not a kilometer. I hope you know. Two miles is very far. How many kilometers is that? Four times one point what? One point six five, isn't it? Times one point six five. 1.61 <laughs> times 4 miles is what? Science students, please. Don't let me down. 6.4. 6.4. Kilometers. On water. You know, at first I used to think that Jesus was like on the shore. You see where the waves are coming. Then maybe he just walked like this. One, two, three steps and then stand there. No! He walked for four miles on the water in the night. Four miles on water like this. He was just walking and I mean, controlling the water. Oh, it's wild. Jesus is, I mean, Jesus is wild. It's wild. That is why people believe that Jesus is the son of God. This is the reason why people believe that Jesus is the son of God. Because of the such things. You get it? Now, I was telling you something. What was I telling you before I got into all this now? Why? Why? You can walk on water. So why don't you normally walk on water? You can change stones into bread. What? Why don't you change stones into bread today? Do it daily. Since you can make a baby, 
without sex. Why don't we do that? Because I want you to know, do you want me to give you an answer? Do you want me to attempt an answer? Okay, I will attempt an answer. I will attempt an answer. To be pregnant in the natural way is already a miracle. To have a male organ that can find its way to the right place and then eject with force Huh? 80 million sperms per meal per meal 100 million sperms per meal and have about 2 to 3 meals of that thing and each ejection hello 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 listen each ejection okay is with great force propelling 400 million people or 300 million people into the air to give them the power to move and then the thing that you are ejecting they are all alive 320 million of them and they are all moving at top speed within seconds Charlie this is a supernatural miracle and on its own that is working <laughs> God is wild and then people with each just Please allow. Can I use some scientific words? Don't, don't think that it's vulgar or, or, or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's biology. You see, many, some people think that all those things that come out are sperms. No, no, no at all. No, no, no. Inside the waters that are coming out, there is vitamin C, ascorbic acid, prostaglandins, and other chemicals which are very powerful, helping the, uh, what do you call this, the tails. And many other glucose, fructose, to feed the sperms as they are, as they are swimming in the filter, then they drink some energy, fresh drink, energy drink then they keep moving Shh. so that's why I say you eh, you are a winner already before you started because you beat 300 million people in a race already hmm. oh you are, you are a champion congratulate your nearest champion actually so many other people they didn't make it You won your race. You were born as a winner. And if you are a girl, you beat so many boys. You beat so many boys already. All girls beat the boys. So don't be afraid of any boy again. So this sperm has been able to swim at top speed. Then the woman is releasing an egg at a particular time. The egg too starts moving like a titanic submarine, which is also moving this way like this. It's moving in the dark. Wow. And it knows where to go. When it is released, eh, it finds its way into the tube. The tube has something that they call fimbriae. And it just swallows the egg. It goes into it. It's just like a Titanic submarine. Just small one. It just moves inside. 
then it moves. And when it's in the middle of the, of the tube, that is when it meets the egg. That's where they kiss. This kissing on stage, they've done it already in, the, in this thing. Yes, in the dark. They've done the practice kiss already a long time. And then inside the tube, it moves like that, shoo, and then it goes inside the womb like that, and then it implants like that, and it stays there. Wow. It's like, I will be here for nine months. Wow. If you are an elephant, you say, I will be here for two years. Wow. So the thing is already miraculous. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So when you are saying God should do a miracle, it's like he should do another miracle to interfere with a miraculous thing that is already miraculous. Yes. Anyway, that's just my attempt to explain. Maybe. Yeah, because it's already miraculous. The whole thing is fantastic already. So, yes, but we don't recognize it. So, let me tell you something. Years ago, when the church started. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, if you count your pennies, you'll be okay. If you count your pennies, you'll be fine. If you count your pennies. Count all the offerings. Count all the small, small monies. Everywhere. Count all. Everything is important. One time I saw some people, they came from a country to come and have a crusade in a country which has a currency which is a lot. You know, there are some kind of currencies, millions. Uh-huh. So the, you see a sack of money, but it's a small amount. So when they did the offering, they, they had the crusade sacks of this currency. I don't want to say the currency and I don't want to say where the country was. Do you get it? But when they saw the money, they, it's just like, oh, this is like rubbish. And they just left and said, oh, I don't know what we are going to do with this. Because they cannot use it in America. Yes. They, I don't know. Who, they just gave it away. And so whoever, you know, needs it. It's like, it's just like paper. It's like just paper, paper, paper. But you see, the Lord told me, count all the small, small things you get. And you'll be okay. And that's what I've been doing. If in Ghana we were to use the small, small things that we have. You get what I'm saying? Eh? You don't get it, you see? You don't get it, you see? If we were to use small, 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 if it was important, oh, we'll be okay. It's also a miracle. That is a miracle. If you can gather all the things God has given to you and use everything God has provided for you, it's also a miracle. But if you are not thankful, you just despise things, small things, what you think is a small thing. So don't let an evil spirit enter you, but rather be thankful and you are going to see supernatural miracles in your life. Amen. All those on YouTube, I see over 1,000 people on YouTube and Facebook and whatever. Now, you are welcome. You are blessed. Now, so we are going to be thankful. Amen. Amen. Are, you, are you ready to be thankful to the Lord? Anybody who is negative, discontented, uh, about what God is doing, you immediately say there's something wrong with this person. And it's an emergency. You don't have to have such people working with you. I don't want to have anybody who is unthankful. You see, the church is a good church. If it's not a good church to you, you find your way. Look at the number of doors. We have so many doors. But it will be better off being without you if you are not thankful for what we have. Amen. Be thankful. Yes, we have a good Bible school. Yes, 
We had a beautiful campus. Yes. If you are not thankful, you should not be there. If you are not thankful, you should not be in full-time ministry. You should not be. If you don't like the job, you should not be. You should be doing something else. Yeah? That's why we really believe in the lay ministry. Because the lay ministry protects people from complaining against the church. Yes. Because when you are at your work and you are complaining, you're, me, I'm, I'm not part of Whoever is not, you are not happy with that person is over there. And me, when you see me, I'm a nice person. So, hallelujah. I give you a hug, I pray for you. That's all. But when you come into full-time ministry and you now see the church as the employer who is a problem, that is when you've got a problem. So that's why it takes a lot for somebody to be in full-time ministry. So sometimes people come into full-time ministry, they have to go back to lay ministry because their spirits are not yet ready for that. Yes. And it will change every... When you see your employer, instead of saying... Bishop or pastor or daddy or whatever, where you just say, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> which means he is coming. He is coming. Is it fantastic? Oh, yes. So, you must have a good spirit and a good attitude throughout. And you must be thankful. So that's why we are teaching to be thankful. So in our church, the culture, you find somebody who's saying, I want to thank you because, you know, when I was in secondary school, I, I was, uh, you, you came to visit me. During Bishop Oko's funeral, we had it all over. He, he did this for me. He hugged me. Yeah. Where's Nakoja? Yeah, yeah, come. Come and tell us your testimony. Yes, tell us, tell us, tell us your testimony. Amen. I said, uh, Bishop Oko was special to me because I came to church from the Kolegono community. I was an area boy who had come to church and he noticed me and he loved me. And in my family, I said that he loved me in a way that nobody else loved me because in my family we don't do hugs. Nobody hugs anybody. Not that there's a problem, but we just don't hug. But when I came to church, Bishop Oko hugged me. And I really felt loved. And I, I was a very quiet boy. I didn't like talking. I, when, so whenever I see him after church, I didn't have anything to say. But I'll just go to him for a hug. And he would hug me and hold me. And when, you know how, how, how old were you? I was, I think, I was 14. I was 13 when I came back. When I met him closely, I was 14. 14 years old. Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> and I think Bishop Oko also created um, an environment that was different from the environment I grew up in. So, so you used to come to church hoping that he would hug you? Hoping that he would hug me. Whenever, I, I, after, after church, I would go and stand there. Sometimes I would be standing with people, talking to people. And I'll just stand there, you finish talking, and I'll say, Can I get a hug? And then he'll just hug me. And then when I get my hug, I will be okay, and then I'll go back. Wow. In Kolegono. In Kolegono. Yes. In You're Kolegono. one of the area Kolegono people I was who a came. Normal Kolegono boy. The area. You are not from like airport residential area. No, 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 no. no, no. Laboni, I mean, no, no, Laboni no, no, no. residential area or I, cantonments. I didn't, I hadn't even heard of all these areas. You are not heard of even <laughs> such an area. Yes. And then tell us. Yeah. Yes, so um, when I came to church, um, Choboko made a church a nice place to be. And he exposed me to a lot of. Uh, good things in life, like in my, when, where I went to school. When I came to church, I realized that 
There were schools like Achimota School or Presec Legon and other great schools, but you had not heard of them. I had not heard of them. And then, like, don't, when you finish J- JHS, you say that English school now, which means I finished school, like you are done with school. Rarely, rarely, rarely would, it, would anybody go to SHS. When you go to SHS, it's even strange. But I, I, I didn't just want to go to an SHS, but I wanted to go to the, the highest. So when it was time for us to choose schools, I went with my father to see the teacher. <laughs> I went with my father to see the teacher to choose schools, and then my father didn't. My father asked me, so what schools will I choose? Because he didn't know any, about any schools. And I said, that, oh, I'll, I'll go to Presec Legon. And the teacher looked at me. <laughs> what, was the school in Collegono? It was not in Collegono. Ah, okay. It was around. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher looked at me. And he said, Kwe. Ajebie, Aya, Presec Legon. Then it means, which means what? Which means that this school that you are in, we don't go from this school to Presec Legon. <laughs> then he asked me that, okay, so I should choose another school. And I said, I'll go to Achimota School. <laughs> and he said, oh, oh it's okay. <laughs> which means you are mad. <laughs> so he didn't allow me to choose Achimota School. And he, just, he chose some schools for me and then left me. But I'll say that I wasn't aware of all this, but through Bishop Boko and his ministry, made me aware that I, you can, when you finish JHS, you're not, you're not done with school. There is more school and there are higher schools and you can go to a, a better school. And that day, also, I remember one day, I told my brother that, Obaya Legon Eko, which means we'll, also, we'll go to the Legon. We'll go to Legon. Like, we also go to Legon. Because, I mean, if you, if you, if you finish school at, at JHS, university doesn't even come up. But I told my brother that we would go to Legon. So, when I, when I came to school, I was so excited. But I didn't, I just, I just acted like it's normal. Because when you are with your friends, you don't have to show that you're, it's a special. When I came to Legon, it was very and special. And you came to the University of Ghana. I came to the University of Ghana. And when you got there? Yes, it was very special for me. Yes. But when I met people, I just have to feel, oh, Charlie, they are here. <laughs> you didn't want them to know that it was a special thing that yes, from yes. where you were coming. Yes. Yes. So, and uh, one more thing, I want to say thank you, Bishop Oko. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for noticing me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for hugging me. I remember one day when he finished preaching, although they were supposed to dress in suit and tie. I didn't know what was, what was happening, but after preaching, he called me to his office and he gave me two ties. He said, I give you, he gave him my tie. Those ties were like mantle for me. And I also want to say thank you for all the kindness you have shown me. What a blessing. You see, you, you will not thank you. Is there anything else? You can't remember. All right, yes. Now, thank you. So, you never know what you are doing that is helping somebody. And you see, you will assume that, you know, there is uh, everything, everywhere. Amen. Amen. What point was I explaining? I called him. You, you. Huh? Yes, the culture of our church is to be thankful. And so, that is how come he is thanking God for even the hug. And then, he's also thanking God for, like, being in church, made him even think that Legon Presec or Achimota School. I'm surprised that he put Achimota after... Uh, <laughs> Presec, but I don't want to comment on it. <laughs> I think it was from his misinformation in Polygon. <laughs> we'll just let it slide for now. 
But the point is that it is, that's the culture. Thank you for hugging me. Thank you for those two ties. But you see, in another place, they'll say, what is a tie? What is a, I'm talking about your old tie be that you use that we have to even iron until it's shining. What is that? Why do you speak like that? Why do you speak in this funny way? Why are you ungrateful? Why are you ungrateful? Why are you negative? And I think I remember I also gave Uko a tie. I gave him a tie and a green jacket. Yeah. He liked, he liked anything that I gave him. So, you meet a person who is a real lighthouse person. The person will be, I want to thank you. I remember that when I was this, I remember this time you said this. I remember that time I was there in church. I heard this. It's a standard behavior. Because you are being taught to be thankful. Thankfulness brings the miraculous and it causes you to do well. I'm going to give you a verse. Do you want me to give you a verse? I want to give you a verse and I want you to remember this verse. Okay? Colossians chapter 2. Let's read verse 6 and then verse 7 is the verse. Colossians chapter 2. As you have received Christ... Jesus Christ, the Lord. So walk ye in him. Amen. Now, rooted and built up in him. How many want to be rooted? And how many want to be built up? What's the difference between being rooted and being built up? It sounds like the same thing. No. Rooted is invisible things which make you stronger. Because you don't see roots. So rooted means working on invisible aspects which people don't see. That makes you a better person. Overcoming hurt, bitterness, love, and the invisible aspects of your life. Morality, And so on. Those are the rootings. And then built up are things that are seen. The obvious things that come out. People see you and see that aspect of you being stabilized. The visible things in your life. Amen. Being rooted and built up in him. And then established in the faith. As you have been taught, you become more established. So your church membership is something that is visible. We see that. Your singing on stage, your work out publicly, but the invisible part, the rooting part, people don't see. And that's the part, you, if you don't stabilize your, 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 your roots, you, you, you will see that you fall. You know, one time when Man Pong, uh, there was a man who sold us a piece of land. And he came and he saw that we built something there. And he came to us one day and said, look, this house you've built, this tree, it will fall on the house. You know, he was an experienced man. He could see that this tree will fall. Because it's not easy to know that the tree is going to fall. He said, this tree will fall. And it fell. The ne- there was a storm and the, the tree came on the house. So experienced people can see you, your roots are not deep. We're going to go down with the next storm. The next time there's something, you will be one of the people kicked out. You survive this one, you survive the one 2020, 2017, 2015, but the next one is going to root you out. If you don't get deeper and root yourself properly, rooted and built up. Yes, we can see you in church, but what about the invisible parts that we are not seeing? As you maintain yourself as a liar and a deceiver and deceptive in many things, and as you maintain yourself as immoral and wicked, but no one can see you or has seen you, careful, rooted and built up in him and established it. But anyway, today is a Thanksgiving service, and I'm showing you this verse for a reason. I don't know whether you are understanding what I'm doing. I, I hope you know that I'm preaching. This is our preaching time. 
Now, it says, as you have been taught. Now, the word I wanted you to teach, abounding, abounding therein with thanksgiving. If you want to abound, abound means, abound means to flourish. You can find in the dictionary. Abound means flourish, prospering, doing well. You do well with thanksgiving. Look at it. You do well with thanksgiving. Oh, fine. Eh? Underline abounding therein with thanksgiving. Eh? Please. Abounding. You will never abound in no needle unless you are thankful. Look at the scripture. Abounding. You will not, you will not abound in marriage unless you are thankful. And you are married to your man and you say, oh, thank God. Hello, darling. Oh, I'm so excited to see you. <laughs> then the marriage is abounding. But at a point, you have the person, you cannot even lift up your head to take your head off your phone to see that somebody has come into the house. And when they call you or when there's something, it's just like irritation or a chore or a bother or a problem. Huh? You're not abounding. You abound with thanksgiving. You want to do well, you must be a thankful pa- Thank your father. Like some of you feel like, my, my father is some, a poor man. He has nothing. My father has nothing. Why should I? What, I should say thank you for what? My father has nothing. My father has done nothing for me. Is this my uncle, Uncle uh, Tony, who is the main person? What type of talking? Where did you learn how to speak like that? Uncle Tony. Who is Uncle Tony compared with your father? Uncle Tony is the main man. Uncle Tony who pays my fees. My father is useless. Where did you learn how to talk that way? Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thank God for my father. Thank God for my mother. Thank God for my school. Thank God for whatever. You are bound when you are thankful. I said you are bound when you are thankful. You are bound when you are thankful. Let me tell you something. If you are an employer and you employ anybody who is not thankful, eh? Olenoko. Eh? Olenoko. Say goodbye to the person. The law, the labor law, it says that anybody who is working, who wants to leave, he has a right to leave the employment by giving one month's notice. And without giving a reason, he doesn't have to give a reason if he wants to leave. And then you too, as the organization, if you, if he, he, you also want him to leave, you also have that right without giving any reason. One month, goodbye. It's better than to have somebody stand and say, eh, this workplace has made me poor. Hey. Yeah, this place I came to work, I've, I've rather become poor. When, when I come to work here, my transport and this and that, the restaurant that I have to eat, it, it, all, it takes all my money. Because when I go for lunch, if I add my lunch, my this, my Charlie, I'd rather leave the job, oh, leave the job. The complaining, some of you work at government places, you are complaining every day. It's better you leave, you will be the next big thief. Yes. A lot of government things have not been updated. One time I was asking a pathologist, when they do a post I don't know how much it is now, but it was six CDs. Like in the days that CD was thousands of CDs, it was I think seven CDs. When you do one postmortem, you get seven CDs. Seven of those CDs, seven. So a lot of government things have not been updated. You don't like it, leave it. I once met a, mun- a municipal man. He said, I have a uh, so many employees, more than 1,000, but I need only 20. 
Yes. Obviously, all the people, you see, because when you share the money, it's not enough. So, you look at the verse. Abounding, therein means in there. You abound in there with thanksgiving. You do well in there. Some of you really didn't do well at home because you always criticize A by A. My father is this. My mother is this. Huh? So you, you didn't abound. You didn't do well from home. Home was not a good place for you. You, crit- you criticize. Yeah. <laughs> You've been criticized. Hey, my father is a pastor and he's this. Take your time on. Take your time. If you want to do well in any endeavor, you people have made me talk too much. If you want to do well in any endeavor, eh, be thankful. You want to abound. You are, you are bound with thanksgiving. And you fail when you start complaining. Ah. I remember when I got married. One time I was having a discussion with my wife. I don't know what she said or what I said or who, who said what. But I told her, don't say anything bad about the church or the people. They are they are good. They are, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Because you know, if you <laughs> if you deal with people after some time, you will fear people. You will fear you will, you will be afraid to do something good for somebody. You know, when people were crying at Bishop Oko's funeral last week, you know, one of the things that I, I, I just took note of, I realized that a lot of the children whom he loved, they didn't try. They didn't do well. Many never honored him, never thanked him, and many backslid badly. Badly. That was how they said thank you for loving us, praying for us, you see, for hugging us, caring for us. They just backslid and went off into the deep end, even saying bad things. Now, if you are, when you become experienced, you, you see that you, 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 won't, you, won't, you won't even bother. Yeah. So you don't abound when you are not thankful. You don't do well. No, 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 no. People, people would like to have your father as their father. Some don't have the father in the first place. Some don't have no, no daddy. They don't have nobody. Nobody who insists. You know, it's wonderful to have somebody who insists on something <laughs> and says no. And says it will not happen when I'm here. Thank God for such things. Oh. People who are completely lawless and boundless. They don't even know how to have a strong hand. A strong hand. Shut up. You are wrong. Hmm. Before, you know, I'm so surprised I'm preaching still at this time. Because when I saw that, I said, me, today. Yes. <laughs> yes. Numbers chapter 14 is what I wanted to tell you. Numbers chapter 14. <laughs> Now the children, all the congregation lifted their voice and cried and wept. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. The whole congregation said unto them, oh, we should have died in the, we should have died in Egypt. We should have died in, we should have died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword? That our wives 
and our children should be a prey. And they said one, one to another, let us make a captain, a new leader. This Moses guy, Charlie, the guy is a man. We've had enough of him. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. And Joshua, verse 6, the son of Nun and Caleb, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Wow. And they spoke, oh, the land we are going through is a good land. So it, it seemed that they were the people who could see something good. How come you can't see anything good? I'm just asking, how come you can't see the good things? Let your eyes see, right, that one in English, you say optimistic, pessimistic. It's like there's an optimistic person, he sees positive, op- pessimistic, he sees negative. Oh, pray you don't marry a pessimist. Hey, when you do your best and you get a nice small room that the two of you will be happy. And what do you need more than one room? You have married, you are just married, you need just one room. You don't need no mansion, man. You need one room to be happy in that one room together. No space to escape from each other. What are you complaining about? Every day, nya, 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 nya. All you need is a bed. Oh, this place is hot. There's a, oh, there are flies here. There's wall gecko. I don't like wall gecko. I don't like cockroach. Ah! I don't know, don't, 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 don't. Hey! Wow! Hmm. Sorry for left. So he said, if the Lord delight in us, he will bring us to this land. Don't rebel. Verse 10. But all the people wanted to stone him. Shut up, you stupid damn fool. We know you are the boss's favorite. We've heard that he's, he's planning to uh, do, rig the election for you. We've heard that Moses is going to rig the election and give the, give the thing to Joshua. You get what I'm saying? That's why Joshua is saying something positive about this case. And Moses said unto the Lord, uh, the Lord said to Moses, how long, how long will these people provoke me? And Moses said, I will, and the Lord said, I will smite, I will kill them, I will kill them. How will he kill them? Look at it. With pestilence, that is an epidemic. And I will disinherit them. And I will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. He was now going to give Moses children. Like Moses will now have a beloved marry and then give birth with some of the young, young, young ones as a father. (laughs) Moses was going to start afresh as a new father at the age of 80. God said, this is what I'm going to do. Let's do it again. I will disinherit them. Hey. So when you are somewhere, you talk in a funny way, you can be disinherited. One time, one time I learned from my father, anytime he was traveling, he would call and change his will. Yeah. And if he's traveling, he'd call and he'd change the will. <laughs> so ask Depending on people's behavior, every time the will is, I will disinherit these people. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> he will just change it. So even when he died, I realized there were some people that were originally on the way. He disinherited all of those people at the end of his life. As your neighbor, do you want to be disinherited because of ungratefulness and a funny way of talking? So then Joshua and Moses started to beg the Lord. The Lord said, I'll use you, uh, you I'll give you th- seven beloveds, you'll give birth. Every- no, 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 no. Moses begs, it's okay. These beloved, we are tired of them anyway. So. <laughs> So after the discussion, look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. We are going only up to 24. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt in the wilderness, and have tempted me now ten times. As some more, God was counting the complaints. So one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's enough. You are finished. So God was counting the discussions. And at the tenth one, he said it's ten. It's enough. Because ten commandments, it means it's enough of commandment. Tithe, ten percent, it means you have given enough. Ten complaints, it's enough. You are dead. You are dead. Ten is a number of it's complete, it's enough. Shall I say it again? Ten commandments, it's like it's all the commands. You don't need eleven commandments, twelve, ten commandments. Ten percent, when you give God your ten percent, you've given him enough. He doesn't even ask for anything else. Ten percent, if you do well with your ten percent, you've done a lot. You've done enough. Ten complaints, it's enough. You are finished. You are finished. So after, after, after more, God is counting. Tell your neighbor, tell your God is counting your complaints. How many have you done? Have you done eight, nine, seven, six? Verse 23. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall eh, any of them that provoke me see. But look at verse 24. I want you to remember 1424, this verse. Yes. This is why people name children Joshua and Caleb. It's because of this. This verse. But then you ask, why, why so many people have Joshua, 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 and Caleb? It's because of this. He said, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit. This, as someone, it was a spirit that was making them complain and talk in a certain way. It's, a, it's an evil spirit. It's a spirit. That's why you are discontented. That's why everything is a problem to you. You got a problem, my dear. You got a serious spiritual problem. That's why nothing is nice to you. Look at all the books I've written. It's not nice to you. Look at the songs that you have. It's not nice to you. Look at even the love song. How many of you know a pastor who writes love songs for you? Do you know? I mean, I know you just introduced me to a person. I'd like to meet the person. No, so that we can form an association of pastors who write love songs. A nice church, some, at least some type of, and the air conditioner is good, but it's not very cold. But my servant Caleb, he had another spirit. And he has followed me fully. You see, people follow, but not fully. I was impressed with Bishop Oko, the testimonies. I mean, the, so many things. I said, but I remember talking with him about this. Then he was talking to the children about that, the same thing. Everything. So many things. I realized that, hey, he really followed me. His wife used to tell me, Daddy, Oko really loves you. He, he preached, he preached, and he, he spoke so much about me the night that he died. Yes. Yes. He was explaining something to them. And was explaining something to them about my name and how it has affected me and how the name of the church, others, will affect the church because of how a name affects you. Yes. Amazing. He has followed him fully. Because he has what? Another, Another spirit. spirit. Wow. Wow. It's from the spirit. It's, it's a spiritual thing. Follow fully. Follow fully. And you'll be surprised where it will bring you. When you are following fully. We are following Jesus, but not fully. As long as I cannot yet walk on water. I don't think I'm doing well. Even I've not been able to do it for three meters. 
So because of that, I'm learning swimming. Three miles of walking on the water. Jesus is really different from the way we are. Amen. So, my servant Caleb, he had another spirit and has followed me. So, don't forget Colossians 2, 7. Abound, abound, abound with thanksgiving. So, I want to suggest anybody, whatever work you are doing, like secular work, your job, you are not happy and you, you find yourself having disgruntled discussions and so I will advise you to go to another job. Get another job. Don't stay there and be somewhere. Because it's a spirit. And you, if you don't take care, you bring that spirit into church. Yes. And you will not abound. You will not abound. And I need you to abound. I'm grateful for the First Love Church. Worship. We have solo. We have um, testimonies um, in the prison. In the prison. In the prison. Yeah. UK prison. UK prison. We have all of that. Yeah. First lovers. What what songs do you dance with over there? What songs? I, I want to know the dance in the prison. Well, well, personally, I don't dance, but we we've danced to Wobba Wobs before. We've danced to. Other things, other, like we've danced, like honestly, and it's only been like three dancing stars, but the energy that they give, the prisoners, even the prisoners start dancing. Even the prisoners, even start-, the prisoners start dancing. So like, and I mean, and the prisoners are not, they're not necessarily young. Some of them could be in their 40s and I've seen a 40 year old man dancing to the songs as well. Wow. Yeah. And what did they say? Did they say they want you to come back? Every time they say that they want us to come back, they would rather us come back than the chaplains themselves or other churches. They say they like the energy of the First Love Church. So, yeah. Wow. And they want you to come back? All the time, all the time. They're always asking for us. Like there's one prison that we went to in yeah, just last month, November. Um, and one of the guys at the end was asking me, when are you coming back? And I think I told him February. He said, no, that's too long. You need to come every single week. So, yeah. Wow. The energy. And the prisoners are so excited to enjoy. So be thankful. The thing you are complaining about, ah, oh, we, we feel what about that. Don't you are complaining. That's what somebody is uh, being blessed with. Let's, let's rather abound in in, 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 in our lives and our ministries with thanksgiving. Look at the verse. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. So, you know, I'm so, I, I like you so much. Yes, I like you so much. Oh, yes, yes. You know it. I've liked you uh, since the first day that I came here. Uh, yes. Yes. 
I've always, I've, you see, liking something is like you are thankful. That, that's why you even like it. Yes. Yes. You know it. You know it. You know it. You, feel, you can feel it. I also feel it. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm going to my office, there are some people, they'll give, they'll be giving me fans. And I also receive the fans. Charlie. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Yes. So we are really blessed. Yes. So thank God for your prison ministry. Be anointed to do more. Encourage the prisoners. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. First Love Church in the prison. They play this music and then they start. Oh, yes. They've danced to Wobba Wops. Yes. How, how many will agree that there's a complaining spirit in Ghana? Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet if you agree with that there's a complaining spirit in Ghana. Complaining about everything. Amatan, it's rain, this, NDC, MVP. Hey! <laughs> Complaining. Every station is complaining. Every radio station, TV station, YouTube, complaining, insulting, complaining. Hey, may that spirit not enter you in the name of Jesus. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful and abound there. Lift your hands. Father, we give you thanks today for the great blessing you showed us. Thank you for loving us and doing good things for us. We are sorry for complaining. Many, many complaints. Have mercy on us and bless us in your service. And as we go into 2024, let there be great abounding, flourishing blessings as we go towards the great miracle that you have for our lives. We give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus, lift your right hand like this. Lift up your right hand. God bless. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. Today is Thanksgiving Sunday. I want to give my life to Jesus. Raise your hand like this. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, come. Come to me from where you are sitting. You're standing. Just come with your hand lifted up. God bless you. I want to give my life to God. You've lifted up your hand. Come. Where Jesus is calling, His grace will be your covering. His blood will flow freely. It will provide your healing. Let us pray. Say this prayer with me, all those of you who've come to the front. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my heart to you. Please write my name in the book of life. I am a sinner. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me as your child. I love you and I thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Come, my dear. Come. I want you to go this way with our pastor. All right? She's going to talk with you and you come back and join us. God bless you. You may take your communion.
body of Jesus Christ. Let this bread represent healing to everyone here. Healing from complaining. Healing from the curses that come through complaining. The body of Jesus Christ. The cup blessing which we bless. It's the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break. It's the now, take the wine. How many are grateful that we have communion every Sunday? All the time. And on flow. You can watch flow this morning. Uh, it's on all day and all night. And you'll be blessed. Even tomorrow. Father, thank you for the cup of blessing. Let a blessing come to everybody who drinks from this cup. The cup of blessing. Lift your hands for your blessing. The Lord cleanse your tongue from the sin of slander and the sin of deception sin of lying the sin of maligning and speaking maliciously and speaking wickedly the Lord cleanse your mouth from every mistake you have made with your mouth every discontentment in your heart put your hand on your heart every discontentment and unhappiness that is coming forth from your heart spewing discontentment and spewing unhappiness the Lord cleanse you from it the Lord heal you from it and the Lord bless you and now may the Lord make his face shine on you the Lord keep you through this Christmas period the Lord keep you alive through this Christmas period and bless you all the way to next year 2024 may you be abounding therein with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth be blessed and everyone said amen. amen God bless you, God bless you, God bless you you may be seated now take out your special thanksgiving offering now you know something In this church, we are going to start to see higher levels of giving than we have ever seen before. Without talking much, we are going to see people on their own giving. I remember a brother said to me, when he made an appeal, Several people came with huge amounts and just gave in his church. He just gave way beyond what they, were, they needed. This is going to be the story. I see the Lord. You know, I saw the Lord giving me something, but I don't know whether it was giving you. He was giving to you. Do you think you were part of this thing that he was giving to me? Lift your, put your hand like this. Receive diamonds into your palm. Real diamonds. The wealth that is in the world. The corn, the oil, the wine, and the diamonds. Let them be given to you freely. Let them be given to you freely. Let them be given to you freely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Large amounts. Diamonds. Thank you. Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, come and put your offering. No, but what about your booster? Do you want to give something extra? How many want to give a diamond as a booster? You know how much diamonds cost? Oh, they cost a lot of money. You see them glittering. Diamonds are forever, they say. Take out your special booster as well. Whatever you want to do for the Lord. Maybe you want to give the Lord something that will become a diamond. Something small. You know, people have diamonds in their pockets. Small, 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 like it's a stone. But the value, million. 
Tell your neighbor I'm a millionaire. You know, one day I was signing the marriage register and then the person who was signing signed some simple. I said, look, you can't, this is not a millionaire signature. Everybody make your signature complex. Develop it now because you are going to be a millionaire. You need a millionaire signature. Can't have a simple, you just write PB. PB, that even a class, whatever can write PB, that's your signature. Ah. Receive grace in Jesus' name. Father, we receive this offering and bless your children. Those who came walking, they will be driving. Those who came on buses, they will be, they will be sporting their own cars. And thank you for the establishment of the Mercedes-Benz Club in the church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me put your offering in. Please, me- members of the Mercedes, Mercedes Club, I don't know whether the membership has been established, but we need to have a meeting. offering. How many brought your special Thanksgiving offering? Hey, I can count only 17 people with a special Thanksgiving offering. How many brought your special Thanksgiving offering? Very few. Please, we are repeating Thanksgiving next Sunday. It's 24th. We are doing a repeat because we didn't do well the first. Remedials. Let's welcome Bishop Josh. Oh, come on, put your hands together. You are not abounding in thanksgiving already. Oh, your, your clapping, your shouting is not abounding. Amen. Now, oh man. Now listen, I know, I noticed that some of you don't like coming to, up to give offerings anymore because of the traffic. So we are working on it. We are going to widen some of the aisles. But please, rise to your feet and come and give your offering. Don't say that because the place is choked. You will not get up. It's not a good. You are not abounding in Thanksgiving. Now I want to suggest that the the pastor should help me for fast movement. Do you see? For example, everybody giving here. Excuse me. If you can go right, it will help. Go right and go round. Everybody, including this group who is coming to the middle, it's because if they can rather everybody should go right. No one should go back to the, the middle house. Go all the way to the edge and then come down. We'll all move faster. No one is listening to me. They're all going back. That is a blessing. Human beings. Thank you. God bless you. Don't worry. To happen to you too. They're also not listening to me. Hello. No, no. Why don't no? Let them go left. You guys go left. Go left. Everybody go left. And this side go right. No, 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 they are coming from the, these aisles, so they should go to the end. There's a huge space in the, in the front. God bless you, God bless you. Yes, in front, all the way. And then if you can walk quicker, young man, yes, God bless you. Give and go left. Can you walk faster? Those of you giving, walk faster, because it's a large church, a lot of people, so walk faster. I'm looking at you, give faster, please. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. All right, good. The middle aisle is empty, so people can come through the middle aisle. Uh-huh. Come fast, you see, because you walk slowly. Nobody say, I can't get up and go, I'm too big. May God not listen to your evil thoughts. Stand up and come and give your offering, and I believe God is going to bless you. Give your thanksgiving offering, give your normal offering, and I know that God is going to bless you. Amen. Amen. Now, how many of you didn't bring your Thanksgiving offering? You want to bring it next week? How many of you want? I should delay by. Oh, wave at me. I need one week, Pastor. Next week, I'll bring it to God. Okay. I'll be expecting you next week to give your Thanksgiving offering. And I know God is going to bless you. Amen. All right. Good, 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 good. You see, as long as they go back through the normal house, we have a problem. They should go to the very last hour only. 
Aha, uh -huh. then you see that we'll be moving faster. But they are, look, they are going back in the middle, so they are going to choke the other people trying to come. All right. Okay, I think we're doing better. Ghanaians drive slowly and walk slowly. It's a marvelous thing to see. Like, sometimes you've been in traffic for a long time. When you get to the front, you realize that there was no traffic. They're just driving slowly. It's a blessing. Usually some taxi driver from Kwewu. He's not in a hurry. On his phone, yes. He's just FaceTiming his friends. All right. Okay, now all the aisles are empty. You can go back to your seat any way you want to. It doesn't matter anymore. Ah, look, we've caused traffic there. Beautiful. Beautiful. And because people are still going back in the middle aisles, they are still blocking, even though it's exactly what we said. But it's just a blessing to be in the house of God. Amen. Are you there? You've gone home. Okay. Now, I need to announce the Christmas timing so that you understand. All right? So, this year, we are not having a carols night service. Because you, none of you asked me about it, so I wasn't sure. You want to have a carols night. So when should we have it? We should have it on Friday. We should have it on Friday. We should have it on Friday night. Okay, we're having carols night on Friday night. I was testing you. Okay. Now, on Sunday, next week Sunday, is the 24th. And as you know, we come to church on the 25th, which is a Monday. So our service on the Saturday, on the Sunday, is going to be 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. 9, 2, now there'll be no meetings. There's, and by the way, there's no more busing. Office, I mean, if you want to come with your friends on a bus, that's up to you. But we are not busing till January. We are on break. It's enough. Okay? So, those who love the Lord should come to church. Those who say, without somebody paying for my bus, I will not come to church. It's, it's up to you. God bless you. Amen. So, we'll be, we'll be here now, 9 to 11. 9 to 11 on Sunday. Okay, then on Christmas Day, 9 to 11 again. Are you there if you're home? There will be no meetings after church so that you can go home and come the next day. Now, 31st December is also a Sunday. So on the 31st of December, our service will be from 9 to 11 so that we go home and come back at 9.30 in the evening to cross over into 2024. I hope it's very clear. So Chalak Night will start on at 9.30 p.m. on the 31st of December, 2024. Amen or no amen? Do you all understand what's going on? Now, at Chalak... At Chalak night, we will, we will be announcing our prayer schedule. Prayer and fasting. Yes. I thought you'll be clapping with joy. Yes. And it's going to be a beautiful... Um, we are fast. The first fast is Monday to Friday. No fluids. Uh, no food. Sorry, just fluids. Only water, water and drinks. Monday to Friday. We are not breaking at 6. We are not breaking in the morning. We are going Monday till Saturday morning. Then you eat. I thought the church would say amen. Uh -huh. So we'll be fasting. And we'll be praying every day. And as you know, in first love, we don't pray only in the evenings. We come morning, evening, morning, evening for three weeks. I'm telling you this so you can eat well at Christmas. You have to eat. How many of you have a Christmas dinner planned somewhere you're going for? Good. Eat very well because the fast is coming in January. Amen. And um, another thing that we'll be announcing. So make sure that you stay tuned and I know that God himself is going to bless you and you are abounding in thanksgiving. Amen or no amen? All right. Do you want to stand to your feet? I hear I have to repeat again for the science students. They don't store information like dates and times and so on. So I'll help. On the 24th, it is a Sunday. Okay, 22nd is our carol's night, Friday night, this Friday night. Now, we'll, I'll, we'll broadcast to you all the dates and times, but I'm just running through. 
On Sunday 24th, service is 9 to 11. No meetings after we close. M uh, Monday is Christmas Day, sorry. 9 to 11, we close. 31st night, 9 to 11, we close. 31st night in the evening, Chalak night, starts at 9.30 p.m. And it closes when we are tired. Amen. Amen or no amen? Are you all ready to go home now? Please Josh, you. wedding bells. Ah, please welcome mother. You, you've not come to church for, for two weeks. You have come to church. Put your hands together and welcome Madam X. Anyway, I've missed you. Welcome home. Please put your hands together for Madam X. She really wants fast. She wants you to thank care for coming every week. She really likes her. She likes it when you shout her name, Madam X. Madam, she really likes it. God bless you. Only the judge should do this to you. No comments, no comments. As for bowing and about too late, should we add abounding therein with? Should we try again? Abounding therein. All right. If this is your first time joining us for service, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming to church. We appreciate your presence. Can you, have, can you come up stage if today's your first time? First timers. Please encourage them. Please encourage them. All right. All right. So today, you heard from our pastor. Wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Gabriel Lamte is getting married to Juna Nashika Josiah. Wow. Oh. Your dad sent me your wedding invitation. And he said I had to come. <laughs> you are going to kiss, you are going to sing. Oh. So they're getting married on the 30th of December, 2023. 30th of the Love Center, time is 1 p.m. The colors are all things bright and beautiful. If you have any just cause why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, please speak now or certainly forever. Oh, BL is not there. BL, new BL. I'll say go. Who's a new girl? Now I have made up my mind about who I'm gonna propose to. I'll see the lady tomorrow night. This is why I am gonna say. I'll say. your feet, let's share the grace, let's share the grace, let's share the grace. <sighs> you know, I think we should, everybody take your phone and say thank you to 10 people who have done something for you since you were born that you have never really told them that that thing you did, it was really important. 
find 10 different people. Say them, I just wanted to say thank you to you today. It's Thanksgiving Sunday. And I want to remember what you did for me and who you were to me. Amen. 10, 10, 10. Find 10. And then, anyway, I'll leave you to do that work. I can't wait for you. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship, contribution, participation, the 25,000 children, which... 100,000. It's not easy. Amen. Many are called. One member. God bless you and see you on Friday.